Hey, back with an update on Project Electrolyte. If this is your first time, this is my 1972 Plymouth Satellite rear motor car. Now this is Tesla swapped with a Model S large sport drive unit in the rear of the car. I've got quite a few miles on the car now. I've got some track time. I've got some data logging done. I've been tearing up the tires a little bit. It's been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of success. Been to a couple shows. Uh, I've had a couple failures though. Uh, the first one was I blew the first inverter. I had an aftermarket control board installed. Uh, it turns out I think it didn't like to go from a real high power pull into high regen. That transition was a little difficult. Uh, ended up burning itself up. So I did swap out the inverter. Now I'm using the factory Tesla control board inside the inverter. But then I went to an intermediate device. This is from EV Controls. This is called the T2C. And this uses the factory Tesla tune and control board, but it's an intermediate so that I can interface with this car and it uses CAN bus communications to do that. So that T2C has been working great, uh, but I actually damaged it. The car is not working right now. Uh, what happened was I was firing up the T2C using the Holly SmartWire programmable uh, wire harness. The problem with that is, is I'm using a uh, one controller to power another controller and sometimes that doesn't work too well. Uh, I had the T2C powered up when I made a programming change on the smart wire and I think it does a power cycle and it damaged the uh, voltage regulator in the T2C. So now I've got it wired to just switched battery power which I should have done in the beginning. Luckily the support at EV controls is unbelievable. They uh, repaired my unit in record time got it right back to me so I'm gonna get it installed today so before I get started here uh, I'm gonna start a series with a little more detail on the individual components of the car I did a pretty good overview of the whole install but there's a lot of little things like this electric rack and pinion I've got lots of cooling components like this AC uh, flat plate heat exchanger it uses the air conditioner to chill the battery loop I've got temp sensors that are used to monitor the temperature in the loop and do lots of the control switching. I've got the 400 volt AC compressor. Uh, in addition to this, there's the battery management system, there's electric calipers, there's the T2C controller. Uh, let me know what you want some more detail on and I'll go into some of the finer points of each of these components. So before doing any of this wiring, I make sure that the 12 volt battery is disconnected and also the 400 volt battery is disconnected. The 12 volt is just like any other car, it's chassis ground, but the 400, 400 volt system is actually completely isolated from the car. So this is just a break in the circuit, which makes sure there's no high power going to any of the high voltage components. Just rolling the car back a little bit to make some clearance. So when I wired up the car, I needed a lot of room to mount components. Uh, some of the relay and fuse wiring. These are the parking brake controllers. And then I've got the T2C mounted here. I added this uh, firewall. So this panel here, that's aluminum and it's been sound deadened. So I've got uh, lots of room to mount components on both sides of the firewall. So here we've got the wire harness for the T2C. Uh, I've labeled everything to make it easy down the road uh, if I have any maintenance to do, like today. Uh, I started using the uh, sh heat shrink labels and they are awesome. I've become a big fan of these rib nuts uh, or rivet nuts. They make everything very easy and secure to, as far as mounting goes. One of the reasons I like this connector is it's got this uh, bolt system that once you get the connector in place, you just use a little quarter inch wrench and sink it, cinch it right up. I 
that's all it takes time to power it up one of the things i started doing when i'm building these wire harnesses uh, i like all the loom and i like the labels but there's so many times i think of something else i want to add in the future so i've been adding uh just extra wires one two three sometimes five extra wires in a harness that way i have uh, expansion in the future and i don't have to build another harness or run a wire alongside it okay it's time to fire everything up i've got the ignition on and now we'll fire up the t2c and we should see it go into neutral here and there it is it's ready to go Everything looks like it's back in order. So this is good news. Uh, when the system was burned up, it wouldn't uh, show the neutral indicator um, or drive or reverse. So everything's switching normally now. And let's we'll make sure the car rolls. And it does. So we are in good shape. So a couple other things I've done is I've worked on a race mode and also the HVAC. So um, the race mode, what it will do is heat up the batteries. You can see my battery temps here. I've got the high temp and the low temp. Those are measuring on the battery uh, modules themselves. So just one degree difference. It's probably partial degree because it doesn't uh, measure. It just rounds up to the whole degree. But uh, right now, 10 degrees Celsius, this is about the lowest we would want to charge the car. This is the, the absolute um, bottom for charging, and I've got that programmed in the battery management system. So if it was below this temperature, it would not allow charging. Now, you can discharge okay, uh, but if you want to get all the performance out of the battery, you need to heat them up to reduce the resistance in the individual cells. So I've got a switch that can do that now. I'm going to share this line lock switch uh, if it comes into focus here. And so when I push the switch down, that turned on the battery heater. And so now as the battery coolant is circulating through the batteries, it's going to heat them all the way up to about 45 degrees Celsius. Now even though that heater is on, it takes a little bit of time. There's a lot of thermal mass. Uh, these batteries weigh a thousand pounds. So uh, it has to circulate through the aluminum ribbon around the shells of, of the individual uh, battery cells and it'll slowly start to bring it up. There it comes already. Uh, you can see it's working on the lowest temp uh, module right now. So, you know, to get all the way up to race mode, I'm probably uh, 25, 30 minutes out. Uh, so it's something you plan ahead of time. If I was going to go do some uh, performance driving or if I'm at the track, ideally I would heat it up while I'm parked at a charge station. So you're using the charger to heat the batteries, kind of like a uh, block heater would be on, say, a diesel engine or something that way. Uh, if you look at the amps, so it's sitting here. The motor is not drawing any power. It's just in neutral. Um, so most of the power is coming from the DC-DC converter which is charging everything on the 12 volt system just like an alternator would but it also has uh, now the battery heater so if I turn that heater back off you can see it drops way down uh, down to 1.9 amps so uh, battery heater takes takes a little bit of juice and that's why if you do it while charging uh, you don't kill any of your battery voltage uh, for performance or for range uh, you can see our high temps bumping up there too. We're about a degree up uh, so far. The other thing I've been working on is my HVAC. So I used this uh, factory HVAC control uh, that came original in the satellite. And the reason I did that is it's got all of the settings from uh, defrost, heat, off, vent, AC, and max AC, as well as the uh, fan speed. So what this does is it uses vacuum to do the mode door switching. So when the air wants to blow up on the windshield for defrost versus on the floor for heat or the vents for uh, vent or AC, all that switching is done with vacuum. So um, I left it because it has all those vacuum ports and they're already plumbed to my HVAC box. Uh, the, what I did is I rewired it. So now uh, even though the vacuum works the same, and that that's hooked up into my vacuum pump that also runs the vacuum brakes, 
um, I've added this thermostat. So this thermostat switches from hot or cold. It keeps the temperature within one degree. Right now you can see it's indicating it's on the heat side. So if I take my factory controller uh, switch module here over to heat, it's going to fire up the heater and uh, the fan. So now the 400 volt heater core has fired up and uh, I actually switched it all the way over to defrost. So I got hot air coming out, the defrost vents, and it heats up immediately. I did put a one second delay on the fan so that what it does is it turns on the heater core and then a slight delay and then the fan. So the, warm, the air comes out warm immediately and I just switched it off and I did a delay turning it off. So now uh, it'll bleed off the heat that's in the heater core without blowing cold air. So now it'll, if I left it on, it'll just cycle at the preset temperature on the thermostat. And when it does that, it cycles the fan as well. Um, I did that just to try to conserve as much power as possible. Uh, you'll see here on the ammeter when I turn the heater core on, it has an immediate surge that's pretty high and then it goes down to about the same as what the uh, battery heater uses. And then when I kick it off, the battery heater or the uh, heater core is going to kick off and then the fan runs for just a little while longer as it's bleeding the heat off of that heater core and then it kicks off as well. So just kind of fine tuning some of this stuff. The air conditioner works exactly the same way. It cycles the fan with the air conditioning compressor. Obviously it's only 60 degrees, so I'm not gonna fire that up right now. So that's about it for today. I'm just gonna reinstall my back seat now that that new uh, controller is in. Thanks again to Chris at EV Controls. Uh, really awesome customer service. I mean, he had that thing back to me so quick. Um, I'm going to put in another vacuum reservoir under the hood. That'll help with the HVAC switching. And then let me know what detail you would like to know more about. Um, I know a lot of projects are going on out there, so if you want to know more about the battery management system, some of the programming, some of the wiring, the theory, uh, how I use the smart wire, how the charger works, um, any of those things, let me know, and I'll do a detailed video on it. We'll see you next time. Uh, please like and subscribe, share if you know some other gearheads, and we'll keep them coming.